we were all like the same. We were mm. like, and you know, I remember friends saying, and I hate this comment, she doesn't look autistic. Yeah, oh, that yeah, really yeah. drives me <laughs> like I want to punch them in the face. And I was like, so what does she look like? It's like she's coping beautifully. And it's just like, oh, I remember when she was young and she'd have the meltdowns. And I guess parents even, they didn't, maybe didn't understand. They wouldn't, you know, they didn't mm. know what to do. And they'd be like patting her on the back. I was like, no, just leave her. Just give her space and she will be fine. Yeah. But the more you obviously you, you interact with her, the worse it yeah. escalates. Do you think we just need more awareness across the board, regardless of who you are? Yeah, yeah and I guess if you didn't know anything about autism, if you didn't have it in, in any of your family members, never like worked with anyone that was yeah. autistic or a neurodivergent, mm. you wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, you wouldn't have, and yeah. you just assume. It's just acknowledging that, I suppose, educating them. Mm. Um, and then on my, yeah, my husband's side, they're in Christchurch, so we don't see hardly any, any of those as well. Is she still having challenges on the food that he, she eats it's got, right now? It has got better, I must say, this year. Um, still very beige, mm. um, but we're doing chicken now. Like, yeah, she's starting to eat. Like last night, we had venison sausages, mm. and it was one meal I cooked. And I was like, Ooh. but everything's like picnic dinner, so everything can't touch. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so similar, but she'll still have different things. Like she would have, like, she had rice last night, or she'll have pasta, and then there'll be carrot and some nuts. Mm. Um, so kind of still healthy, but very different to what we would have. Yeah, yeah. It takes around 14 days through, because um, we went through one of the food clinics at the hospital, yeah. and it takes like, there's actually a whole, there's a whole list of steps to even get uh -huh. to the chicken. So mm. it might be, the chicken every day for like 14 days and then it might be touch the chicken for 14 yeah. days <laughs> then it might be smell it so it's a lot of wastage but um yeah. yeah and it's just one of those and I think I I used to get quite panicky because I'd be like she's not getting enough nutrients you mm. know mm. um but I've just kind of learned to let go and, and I think being a bit more relaxed yeah she totally. she's willing to try things mm. yeah. and they do a group for under 15s they they are totally inclusive they're amazing mm. like lots of role play so I can leave her there and yeah, she shops up a storm in there, no trouble. Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, right. loves it. But it's, you know, they're all very, they make them feel welcome, you know. She's right. safe and she feels comfortable in there. Mm. Yeah. You mentioned about Dungeons and Dragons. So is that one of her interests? Loves it. Yeah, yeah. I got her into that. I don't know how long that shop's been open. I think just recently, I just yeah, saw maybe that. Oh, yeah, maybe a new shop. A bit. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've expanded. They've taken over two now. Probably a year and a bit ago. Mm, um, mm. And they used to do them at the library actually, and then COVID hit, and then they yeah. didn't. Yeah, I think it was at Petoni and um, the War Memorial, and yeah. then went around and they're like, oh, I don't know. So then that shop opened, I thought, oh, we'll try it out. Mm. So the first session I went along, I stayed for about half, and then I left, and then the um, one of the dungeon masters actually has an autistic brother. Oh, so she, okay. they were they were just made you feel so comfortable. They're like, just go and do your shopping, or whatever. The kids mm. will be fine. Mm. Um, and now I just, yeah, she's like, when's the next session? Leave me there. Really comfortable. And then I also got her into. So from there it goes. This you can do the Dungeons and Dragons, and then now she paints the little, you know, the little miniatures. Yeah. So she'll either she's done a couple of sessions here, but otherwise she'll take them home and paint. So that's another another skill. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Not, uh, or any disability, you know, yeah. just anything. And there are a lot so of anyway. You're going to change it. Yeah, you know, like you can't go back to like something that happened in the 1980s, like or even the 70s, where they were in like an IHC home and there was nothing. Like you need these people have amazing skills. Yeah, they can. Uh, I mean, they are so clever. If I would put it this way, uh, uh, they are now ta taxpayers. Yeah. I mean, if that's yeah. what they wanted to hear, yeah. like if I will be honest. Yeah. But, that's what I mean. It's just like actually, because it's the hard bit for a lot of them, is the whole job interview. The process is so overwhelming for them, mm. and they don't know. But they've got that. They'd be amazing. Do you know what I mean? You look at their skill set, but it's just getting them through there. And they're focused. And yeah. They are. Like and having an understanding. I mean, if they can work from home, or if they can work on a desk with no light or with no sound near the noisy fridge or whatever it is. Like, okay. Do you follow um, uh, Tony Atwood and Sue Larkey? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're uh, good. I always get like yeah. their, their, um, they have some pretty cool things, eh? Yeah, that's where I heard about the gifts and surprises that mm. if there's an, if you're going to a party with an autistic person, mm. uh, make sure that uh, you mention what's inside mm. because they usually, yep. they don't yep. like surprises like that. Um, we've never had an IEP and I have asked a couple of times, so, right. um, but they are managing her is what they say. Mm. How, 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 how is that? I mean, 
Every parents that I've heard, they've had IEPs as well. Is it only for the high needs or only? Everyone is meant to have one and I've only just been kind of learning a lot about them. So every child with a disability is meant to have them and basically it's it's an adjustment of the normal work they would set for the normal classroom. So For neuro neurotypical, Yes, right? yeah. yeah. So if, for example, Ava might need a little bit longer or um, she is quite capable of writing, but say for those kids that need to write on a device, yeah. or like sometimes pen and paper is very hard right. for them. Um, yeah, Autism New Zealand's employment program. Oh yeah, um, yeah, that one. Yeah, and then there's Yubi College, which is based in Wellington mm -hmm. train station, so they can go there from 16. Mm -hmm. So they do mixed media, there's lots of like um, IT security, there's lots of different options. Mm -hmm. um, they can learn in yeah, very small classrooms, like maybe 10, class um, yep and a lot of um, families that we get we're finding like the children I find between 15 and 17 they're getting to that but with the pressures on pressures on for exams and you've got to be really careful of burnout yeah so um, some of them are take the children and they'll either do like a couple of days dual enrolment so some at Takura so they'll pick their favourite subject so it can be done at home and then say two days at a college because right. they just get so overwhelmed by it all so it's just learning to make sure that they recharge a little bit. Yeah so when you say you recharge um, do you have any in particular that they can start doing like meditation? Um, yeah like meditation whatever they're into if it if they if you have a um, I'm just thinking for Ava she loves like nature's really good for her um, and we would cut back like play dates, um, just giving her time to herself, so just to, to reach, like making sure she's having enough sleep, obviously eating a bit better. Um, so it depends what your kids into if they're a runner, you know, obviously they, they might like to run the hills, it's just their way, like I, myself, if I've had a stressful day, I like to walk the hills, I love walking, or listening to music, yeah. so it's whatever, whatever I guess your child's into, if it's yeah. like art, painting, drawing, whatever, yeah. swimming. In my case, when if there will be like let's say there's a party in a new place, yeah, we, what we will be doing is we're going to visit that yep. before the party. Yes, that's what we do. <laughs> I, that's what yes, we do. Yeah, we yeah. do that too. Yeah. Yep, and we'll scan the menu, yeah. or I'll text the mum um, and go, what kind of foods there? She's pretty good now. Mm. Um, depending on what time the party is, I'll either feed her before she goes, and at least then I know if it's only cake, she'll eat cake. But generally, party food's party food, and she'll yeah. just eat all the sweet stuff, and that's fine. Ah. <laughs> right, so how are you uh, going to parties and stuff? Uh, because this is what we usually do, like party, uh, sorry, not party party, but uh, children's party and stuff. So, so do you have, like, if it's your son's birthday? Uh, during my, my son's birthday, it's only just family. Uh, yeah. he, he hated the noise. Yep. I was going to say we learned that very quickly. It mm. took us till she was about oh, seven or eight and she'd yeah. have birthdays. And then half the time, I, I might have even before that, mm. she'd go and hide in her wardrobe mm. and I'd be like, well, the cake blowing. And then actually last year she said, can I have a cake? And then she had a couple of friends around and she said, mm. can you actually not sing me happy birthday? Just blow out the candles. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's so you learn over time what works. What, what they want and quite often like surprises she hates them so quite often she will go online and pick what she wants for her birthday oh. so last year she actually went into aliexpress and she had it was great like she knew what she ordered but it came randomly over like <laughs> three months you know but um the, yeah and okay. then we will buy her something but i will say this is what we're going to get you so she knows rather than anticipation because it's like on christmas um, if you have all these presents it's very overwhelming and if everyone's watching you open it and to see your reaction it's yeah I, I, I also have a daughter, so I'm just thinking like, okay, I, I bet she's gonna gonna be more open to mum. Yeah, yep, very open. Yeah, yeah, dad probably doesn't. He knows, but he doesn't know. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't tell dad. Right, Dad's right, coming. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it needs to be to have like a, a bond between mum yeah. and your daughter. Right? Yeah. 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 I guess most dads, but yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. She just came to me, so yeah, it's been it's been way easier than what I thought. She's taken yeah. it really well. Going back to that deodorant and being familiar with, oh, there's a deodorant here and blah, blah, blah. So she has no sensory... Um, no, she didn't like sprays. So I've narrowed it down to a natural one now that's just got a hint of, I think it's rose. Mm -hmm. um, I just get a pick and save. Aotea Road, it's a New Zealand one and she, yeah, every day. Mm. And she's okay with hygiene. I, I've heard there are some kids who doesn't like toothbrushing during their yeah. young age. Approximately one in every 59 children are born with autism. Albert Einstein. Dr. Einstein had no speech until age three. 
Steve Jobs. He was a loner. He brought snakes to school. Leonardo da Vinci. This man was far advanced on the autism spectrum. I'm not naughty. I'm autistic. And I just get too much information. You're listening to Takiwa Tanga. Love Not Cure, exploring autism one strength at a time. Thank you for your time, uh, Dana, and appreciate I know you're busy, but you still had the time for, for this podcast and to share some of the challenges and experience that you had and how you overcome those uh, challenges. So first and foremost, um, who's Dana? Um, okay, so um, I am a mum of two beautiful girls. My eldest is um, neurodivergent. Um, I enjoy outdoors, um, listening to music, meeting friends, um, walking, and generally chatting. When did you find out that a lot of your daughters... In the process. Yeah, in the process itself. Um, so Ava was born, she was bang on like 41 weeks, so normal pregnancy, mm. everything was fine. Mm. Um, she was always a very alert baby. Probably when she started getting into solids, so she, um, she would turn her head away. Um, and I had meetings with Plunkett and I had mm. my concerns and they would write it down yeah, um, yeah. and then it would be back and forth to the GP. I used to go walking with a friend daily and her son would eat so I knew mm, something wasn't quite right. Mm, mm. Um, sleeping, um, the only way I could sleep like she would sleep would be walking for hours which yeah. is good for me <laughs> <laughs> um, or driving in a car to get her to sleep. Um, no issues at kindy at all, yeah. nothing was picked up. Um, probably, I don't know, she started school. Yeah, she started school and lucky enough we struck an amazing teacher who herself had two autistic um, yeah. nephews. Right. So right. she said, I think there's something there and I was actually really grateful. I yeah. was like, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so she got the ball rolling with the school stuff. So yeah. Ava had already done six months so she started July the year before with a, mm. a lovely teacher, but I didn't know she was having meltdowns in school. The right. school didn't yeah, let me know that until the following year. So the process started yeah, January the following year, and then it must have been a good 18 months to, yeah, over 18 months to get an appointment with mm. child development in Lower Hutt. Mm. Um, but in the meantime, we were trying to get what support we can, so we went privately. So before the child development in Lower Hutt, did you went to your GP to seek like appointment from? Yeah, GP? So, sorry, I had an appointment. Yeah, with the GP, um, and then she put the referral f- through. Right. Um, she had really good language. She was meeting all the the developmental mm. things, but obviously masking and yeah. Yeah. And I mean that was quite a long time ago, so I guess it, there's a lot more education and awareness around it now. And when it comes to the meltdowns, it, was it like uh, I'm trying to see how the melt downs are so she would um so hers were probably more sensory so it would be getting dressed of tags or clothing mm. um she used to have issues toileting so quite mm. often she would do number twos and hide um, number twos sorry poos ah, right. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. All right. yeah. Okay. so she would hide when it happened mm. um and now that i look back at kindy after she was diagnosed i'd have a conversation with the kindy teacher and she said oh well, she used to hide under a desk if it was like noisy but it's quite hard because that behaviour is mm. sometimes normal at the, the preschool age. Yeah, so kindy. Yeah. And then how long did it take from GP to lower heart uh, oh, child gosh. development? I mean, if you don't yeah. remember It was probably thing. around about, yeah, I'd say a good 18 months to just under two years. 18. And then just before we got the appointment, that's when we went privately because we were like desperate. We are just like wanting to get it sorted before she was like at school and to kind of help her where we could. That's when we went into Vaughan Richardson, a pretty yeah. private paediatrician in town. That's the formal assessment, the private? Yes. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Vaughan just basically said she had high anxiety and gave me melatonin for the sleeping. Mm. And mm. then we were still on the wait list at Child Development and we were going out one day and they called because a family hadn't shown up. So I literally mm. had an hour to get these kids <laughs> down there with nothing prepared. Um, and that process took, oh, it felt like probably a good few weeks over time because mm. you were visiting, you know, there was a paid and then there was yeah. OT. Mm. Um, and there was lots of um, psychologist appointment. And then, that's right, there were school holidays, so the psychologist mm. obviously wanted to see what Ava was like playing with, mm. interacting with other kids. Mm. So I ended up having children at my house, and she came in 
you know, observed there, which was quite cool. Is she okay with other kids? Yeah, she's mm. got, yeah. They get, yeah, she is. She's got lots of really good friends. So she's really friendly like that. Mm. Um, but it depends who the kids are, usually, <laughs> yeah. But in most situations, she is. she's pretty easygoing. She's well-liked, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, very creative. In terms of uh, finding out and getting the assessment, uh, what happened after that? Like, once you already are aware she is on the spectrum and you got your meet-up with the, the private uh, health care, um, any other support that you got? Um, nope. Uh, I'd done a lot of research myself, so I kind of knew before I got there. Um, I was It's quite an overwhelming process mm. as a parent, mm. so you get lots of information. I literally couldn't look at it for like two months. I was just yeah. like, didn't know where to go. Right. And then you kind of, I don't know, I came down actually to Autism New Zealand here in Patoni when mm. Jenny Woodfield was the outreach, mm. and it was this tiny little building, and I remember coming in, and she was amazing. Like she was like, I've got an autistic daughter, and you know, she's mm. she's like thirty two now, yeah. and she's made it through. And I'm like, oh, there's light at the end of the tunnel, oh. <laughs> you know. Like, and she was amazing. Like she she hooked me up to all the right supports. Mm. Um, I didn't know about needs assessment, so basically you're given your bit of paper, and that mm. was it. Mm. And then Ava did. So then I went into school, explained what her diagnosis is, and. It is an amazing school, and I know one of the mm. teachers, older teacher, said, look, I've already got a child, um, a grandchild. I, you don't need to tell me anymore. And I was like, well, actually. So I did have to bring a psychologist into school a few times just right. to make sure school was on board with the where Ava was going. Then the school is um, welcoming at that time? So the school didn't know until, yeah, she would have been, yeah, it was about five and a half. So her teacher was amazing. Okay. They've been great. Like, it, and a lot of it is is communication with the school and mm. the teacher and checking in. And if she's had a rough night, if she's not sleeping, I would send them a message so they know. Mm. Mm. Um, but they've been amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Schools are not built for autistic kids, right? No. It's like very overwhelming. Did did, yeah. did, they, did they help in in that? Sense? Um, nope. She has just mainstreamed, and because she has um, low needs, we don't get any support, so we're not entitled to any like teacher aid or anything like that. Mm, mm. Um, she's very bright, um, but does I guess it's a social side. If there's a game like sport, mm. that's what trips her up really, is yeah. the rules, etc. Yeah. Even if a person has low needs or they still need uh, support in terms of education, like how far or advanced they are from... So from I think they, like the first probably few years, like her teachers would adapt, like she went through, I think it was like the dinosaur phase, so they would, mm. they would kind of tweak her work <laughs> a little bit like the, you know, like the dinosaurs, she, you know, mm. like if they were doing writing, mm. they would accommodate it that way. Mm. Um, we've never had an IEP and I have asked a couple of times, so... Right. Um, but they are managing her is what they say. Mm. How, 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 how is that? I mean, every parent that I've heard, they've had IEPs as well. Is it only for the high needs or only? Everyone is meant to have one, and I've only just been kind of learning a lot about them. So every yeah. child with a disability is meant to have them, and basically it's, it's an adjustment of the normal work they would set for the normal classroom. So For neuro neurotypical, Yes, right? yeah. yeah. So if, for example, Ava might need a little bit longer mm -hmm. or... Um, she is quite capable of writing, but say for those kids that need to write on a device, yeah. or like sometimes pen and paper is very hard yeah. for them. Um, yeah. The modules or the school settings created for uh, neurotypicals, and when you are starting to rate them, like based on what they've done for the past or for, for this year, it's based on neurotypical um, curriculum, if that's the right term, curriculum, and for aut autism or autistic children. I don't think it's going to work for them. So how is she being assessed in terms of the curriculum? Same, she gets no, no there's no limitations. I mean, mm. she's very bright, so she's above mm. and beyond. She is a perfectionist, so that is the hard oh. work. So sometimes, yeah, that falls the other way as well, because mm. she is so hard, so it can take a bit longer, that one. But mm. academic-wise, she's, yeah, right. yeah. Oh, that's good. So how's the family when you found out that she has autism, like the grandparents or so aunties? Uncles. Um, so my parents, they live down south, so mm. it has been, we don't see a lot of them, they probably come up once a year for that. Mm. Um, they were still quite set in their old ways. I remember like Ava doesn't, like for dinner for example, yeah. she would still sit on her own like, and we eat separate dinners, as oh. in she will have something, she won't eat what we have. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kind of. Sensory, yeah. <laughs> um, 
but they are that generation back then, you know, it's yeah. like you sit at the table and you eat what's in front of you. Mm. So it's had, it's been able to re-educate mm. them. Mm. Um, especially the, are, are they strict, like especially grandparents based on my experience, they're strict like you have to eat, we all have to eat at the same time yes. and same food, yes. no other food. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you don't like it, it's tough luck. We sit there until it's gone yeah, and there's yeah. nothing else. Yeah, yeah. So whereas you can't. Yeah. <laughs> so they have come a long way, like it's been, it's been better. So it's just acknowledging that, I suppose, educating them. Mm. Um, and then on my, yeah, my husband's side, they're in Christchurch. So we don't see hardly any, any of those as well. Is she still having challenges on the food that eat, she eats it's got, right now? It has got better, I must say, this year. Um, still very beige, mm. um, but we're doing chicken now. Like, yeah, she's starting to eat. Like last night we had venison sausages mm. and it was one meal I cooked. And I was like, ooh. But everything's like picnic dinner, so everything can't touch. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so similar, but she'll still have different things. Like she would have like... She had rice last night, or she'll have pasta, and then there'll be carrot and some nuts. Mm. Um, so kind of still healthy, but very different to what we would have. Yeah, yeah. It takes around 14 days through, because um, we went through one of the food clinics at the hospital, yeah. and it takes, like, there's actually a whole, there's a whole list of steps to even get uh, to the chicken. So mm. it might be the chicken every day for, like, 14 days, and then it might be touch the chicken for 14 yeah. days. <laughs> then it might be smell it. So... <laughs> It's a lot of wastage, but um, yeah. yeah, and it's just one of those. And I think I I used to get quite panicky because I'd be like, she's not getting enough nutrients, you mm. know. Mm. Um, but I've just kind of learned to let go, and, and I think being a bit more relaxed. Yeah, she she's yeah, willing yeah. to try things. Mm. Yeah, I remember they were saying that she, he, my son used to be in uh, with a nutritionist at uh, uh, yeah. Valley as well, and the nutritionist said that. Um, it's like play rather than... Uh, yes, we done the food thing and I went yeah. to one of it, but you know, when you've got a younger child, you don't have an hour or two to play with hummus and paint my nails with hummus and very good at their jobs and that'd be amazing if they could see our kids more yeah. than like once, but they can't, so it's, yeah. it's a tricky challenge. It's, it's, yeah, it is. And uh, they said like, uh, let's say this is the food and just make sure that it goes near the mouth. Once it's near the mouth, then th it's there's a high uh, likelihood that it will go inside the mouth. Like. Well, she, Ava used to get a really bad growing pain up until probably two years ago, and that's mm. when I put her on magnesium. It's because she, mm. she wouldn't get them through the nutrients. Oh, yeah, right. so really, really bad. Is she having problems with um, vitamins? Magnesium, you didn't I give her I give her every day um, vitamin C, and mm. I've just bought gummies, like, just because they're always, they always seem to be sick after COVID. Um, and I give her a magnesium at night, but that's good for sleep mm. and relaxing the body. You're no longer taking, or she's, she's, she's no longer taking the melatonin? Yeah, she has to. Yeah. She has to? Well, she doesn't. She'd still be up till midnight, so she right. she needs it. Yeah. Mm, mm. We lapsed it a bit in the holidays, and I was like, have you had your melatonin at 10 o'clock? And she's like, no. And she's still like, you know. Does she need like uh, time before sleeping to take the melatonin, like 30 minutes before? or? Yeah, I try and remember, I try and give it to her about 7.30, but it's getting later till 8. And then she'll, she'll pretty much go straight out now. Like she'll read, she'll go to bed and read or draw. Mm. Um, and then mm. she's just asleep yeah. 9, 9.30 yeah. and sleep all night now, so it's good. Somewhat similar uh, experience with my youngest. And for some reason, who he wakes up at 12 midnight. Every night? Is he on melatonin? No, uh, he used to uh, wake up every midnight, but we didn't want to give give him that. Uh, she wouldn't take the GP one because she doesn't swallow tablets. So ah. I actually get them through Amazon and they're little chewy strawberry dissolvable lollies. Yeah, yeah. Is it safe? I mean, yeah, I took it to the doctors. It's natural ones we got. She goes, there's, right. there's apps. over there you can actually buy them over the um, like just over the counter. Right, but it's it's no longer like um, uh, it's you're now paying it from your pocket, right? Yeah, but it's only $15. Oh. I was paying for it anyway. It's $15 for 200 tablets, whereas the GP, I was getting uh, 30 tablets for $20. Ah, and she would need them. Mm. So it's just yeah. like, yeah. so I just get it through Amazon and ship a big heap out. Uh, going back to my story, sh he will wake up 12 and then sleep back again like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And then that's um, for the day. Yeah, and then when I'm going to bed, now it's like a couple of hours and after a couple of hours, I will wake up like, oh, do I need to sleep now? <laughs> or should oh. I just sleep? But he used to be like that. But good thing he improved. So he's now sleeping. So our technique is, we he if he will sleep like 8, 8, 8 p.m., uh, 9 p.m., 
definitely he will wake up at one two. So we found out the trick like we need to uh, he needs to be awake until ten eleven. Mm -hmm. It's not a good uh, thing. Most, but most assumption of the it's the melatonin. See, brain though, it's something that just doesn't switch off. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we just need to make sure that in terms of tablets, because of the light, mm. we we need to yeah. control him. Yeah, I make sure they're off screens as well because it's the scre it's the screens that they're addicted yeah. to. Isn't yeah, it? so their brains probably will yeah. interpret. Oh, it's still daytime, and you're yeah. still active. Yeah. No, yeah. so no, that's the, our trick. So we don't want him to to leverage on melatonin. Mm. I don't know. It's it might be uh, there might be some effect. But if you can do it that way, if you can manage it that way, in yeah. baths, I don't know if you got a bath, baths are really good with like some, um, you know, um, magnesium salts and stuff in them, oh. and then or some lavender, and just mm. really, if he likes the water, that he is. He likes the water. Yeah. 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 That's always okay. good. So you put bath, and obviously it's warm, magnesium, yeah. and okay. Yeah, and like a couple of drops of like lavender. But just like a powder? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like a salt type of thing, really mm. fine salt. And I just put a handful, sprinkle it around. Yeah. And it d dissolves in, but it's really good for my, um, legs and stuff. Mm, mm. And in terms of uh, going back to Ava, uh, growing up and then uh, reaching puberty. Yep. I've seen a lot of questions about puberty. So how, how's puberty? Puberty's been a breeze. I was dreading it, <laughs> uh, you know, and it's been good. Like I talked to like people here, you know, but we have been set up. So we started it probably when she was eight. So she wasn't even going through it. But we knew like I knew myself, the more information she had to process it, the better the time and to be really open. I grew up in the generation where you didn't talk about it. Oh. No, it was like, that's it. And, got your little period box and that was it <laughs> so it's at yeah probably at eight I started with deodorant to start mm. and that was that was good we started early because it took a long time to find mum because of the smell didn't right. like the spray or the feeling so that whole sensory thing did she start uh, using it or just smelling at first um, I think we put it in her room and it was probably a visual thing I'd say for a while and I don't need uh, it you know and then she obviously accepted it mm. um, and then in year five six so standard three, four at school, mm. they do um, they do education classes right, right. Um, for both of them, and then we would just open. And then I actually bought like kits, and then I had um, books mm. that I would leave in her room, and that she, you know, she can the, they're all tailored. Yeah, books that parents had recommended. So a Kaz Cook one is a really good one. Oh, um, so it's called Kaz Cook. Okay, she's right. she's yeah, she's written quite a few. Um, I th I've just bought her latest one, I think it's Teen Life, and I think the other one might be from 8 to 12, and it covers everything from like mm. friendships to whatever. And strategies on how to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so she would just read that in her own time, and mm. then really open. Mm. Um, yeah, it's been absolutely fine. Do you initiate the discussion, or you just wait for her to like tell you, yeah, oh, Mom, she, I want to talk to you about yeah, something. Yeah, 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 and she will, she'll do it, she's like, don't tell anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I would say probably they learn a lot on YouTube, I would say, without us knowing, you know. Mm. There's a lot of really good, probably, tools that they're showing. That they can, yeah. yeah. I, I, I also have a daughter, so yeah. I'm just uh, thinking that, okay, I, I bet she's gonna gonna be more open to mum. Yeah, which is yeah very open. Yeah, yeah, Dad probably doesn't, he knows, but he doesn't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't tell Dad. Right, Dad's right, coming, right. yeah. Yeah, so it needs to be, to have like a, a bond between mum yeah. and daughter, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess most dance, but yeah, I don't know. Mm, she mm. just came to me, so yeah, it's been it's been way easier than what I thought. She's taken yeah. it really well. So going back to that deodorant and being familiar with oh, there's a deodorant here and blah blah blah. So she has no sensory. Um, no, she didn't like sprays, so I've narrowed it down to a natural one now mm. that's just got a hint of I think it's rose. Mm, mm. Um, I just get a pack and save. Aotea mm. Road, it's a New Zealand one, and she. Yep, every day. Mm. And she's o okay with hygiene. I, I've heard there are some kids who doesn't like toothbrushing during their yeah. young age. She's been really good like that. Mm. Um, showers mm. every night. Mm. You know, we still got to prompt her, you know, it's time for a shower, but mm. she willingly goes every night. Yeah, yeah, she's very clean like that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I've been lucky. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah, it's kind of like a smooth sailing for you. Yeah. yeah. And um, she definitely does do her teeth. Still a bit of prompting, but we get there. <laughs> So what are the, the food that she's eating now? Is she, uh, you mentioned she's no longer that sensitive. Yeah, so she literally, when we went to the, the food clinic, I think we were down to probably under 20 foods. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was going through, like, if you had, a, say, a raw carrot, 
you've probably done it. Then yeah. you cook it, and then you might grate it, and then you yeah. might cut it a different way. Yeah. Um, so now, I don't know, like, she likes fresh fish now. She wanted to do fresh fish mm. from the supermarket. Blue cod on my stand. Mm, mm. So expensive fish, but yeah, um, yeah. doesn't matter. But her palate is definitely op- opened up. Opened up, yep. yeah. Right. I mean, not great on fruit or veggie. She'll only do raw carrot. That's the only veggie I can get into her. Mm. Won't do any red meat. Um, mm. And the odd bit of apple if it's right. crispy in a certain type. But that would be it in fruit. Did she food jog? Like my son right now is doing food jogging. He will be eating something, let's say, um, rice cracker, let's say, for, for a month. Or after that, he doesn't like the rice cracker. He will go to apples, just apples. Yes, we have a lot of food in our pantry. People oh. go, wow, and I said yes, because you buy it all up and then Yes, it gets parked up. So I do remember going back to before school, mm. probably when she was probably three to about five, mm. we had Heller's pre-cooked sausages. Well, we didn't. She had a Heller's pre-cooked sausages uh. every night. Wow. Now she won't touch them. <laughs> <laughs> We're onto Heller's bacon now, and it has to be the streaky bacon. Was there a time that she just didn't eat food? Yep, we did go, and that yeah. was... It was just after she got diagnosed, and I rang in a panic because she was... Sorry, just before she started school, there, when she was about four and a half, between four and five, she mm, ended up with mm. pneumonia in hospital. Oh. And she was in hospital for a week. So this is before she got assessed. We didn't know, obviously, anything, and it was horrific. I was mm. taking food in, and now I think it must have been awful. Like She actually has a fear of going to the doctors yeah, yeah. now with the needles, the sound. Um, and she was literally in there for a week because she wouldn't eat. But we didn't know any of this. So we were taking food in and they were like, you need to eat this. And I was like, oh. now I think about it, it was absolutely torture. Mm. Um, and then I put her, um, the GP gave her, it's called Incrim and like a multivitamin for fussy eaters. But when her anxiety gets quite high, mm. she doesn't eat. Mm. Yeah. So up, uh, up to now, until now. Yep, it mm. kind of goes, she's been great at the moment. Although yesterday, her school lunchbox, she'd eaten one thing and she said, oh, they needed to play with me. Or they wanted me to do something. So it depends on the situation. So yeah. if she went to, um, I don't know, I guess out of routine. So, so if she went to someone's house for like breakfast, mm-hmm. she wouldn't probably eat it just because it's a different routine. Uh. So it's different situations. Or if she was like on a school, say a, mm. a school camp or whatever, mm. probably wouldn't eat the food. In my case, when if there will be like, let's say there's a party in a new place. Yeah. We, what we will be doing is we're going to visit that yep. before the party. Yes, that's what we do. <laughs> I, that's what yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. we do that too. Yeah. Yep, and we'll scan the menu yeah. or I'll text the mum um, and go, what kind of food's there? She's pretty good now. Mm. Um, depending on what time the party is, I'll either feed her before she goes and at least you know, if it's only cake, she'll eat cake. But generally party food's party food and she'll yeah. just eat all the sweet stuff and that's fine. Ah. <laughs> all right, so how are you uh, going to parties and stuff? Uh, b- because this is what we usually do, like party, uh, sorry, not party party, but uh, children's party and stuff. So, so if you have, like, if it's your son's birthday? Uh, during my, my son's birthday, it's only just family. Uh, yeah. he, he hated the noise. Yep. Uh, I was going to say we learned that very quickly. It mm. took us till she was about oh, seven or eight, and she'd yeah. have birthdays. And then half the time... It, not might even before that. Mm. She'd go and hide in her wardrobe mm. and I'd be like, well, the cake blowing. And then actually last year she said, can I have a cake? And then she had a couple of friends around and she said, mm. can you actually not sing me happy birthday? Just blow out the candles. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So you learn over time what works, what, what, what they want. Yeah. And quite often, like surprises, she hates them. Mm. So quite often she will go online and pick what she wants for her birthday. Ah. So last year she actually went into AliExpress and she had, it was great. Like she knew what she ordered, but it came randomly over like <laughs> three months. You know, but then, um, yeah, and then we will buy her something, but I will say, this is what we're going to get you. So she knows rather than anticipation, because it's like on Christmas, um, if you have all these presents, it's very overwhelming. And if everyone's watching you open it and to see your reaction, it's, yeah. Does she like hate, uh, probably not the right word, but hate surprises? Like uh, if it's a box and I say, what what do you want? Yep, she, she would, or yeah, she would say, oh, you, you, or if I say something for me that's come in the mail, she, I'll say, you, why don't you open it? And she'll say, no, you open it. Like, yeah. yeah. So she needs to know what's in what's there. What's inside? Yeah. And that'll bring her anxiety down. Yeah. yeah I just learned about that concept. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty, yeah, so yeah. it's pretty amazing. And it makes sense, though. Mm. I mean, I like a, a surprise to a degree, but I 
I don't like a big surprise if that makes sense. Because, yeah. Because if someone said, oh, you know, something, but if someone, say my husband came home and he bought me something, then that's probably a little bit different because it's on the spot. But, you know, if it's all pre-planned, it's yeah. quite, yeah. And if you're expecting something else. And she hates being like centre of attention, you know, like right. it's all about her. Mm, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So at least you're learning from... Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. She'll it, decorate her own cake, you know, it's great. So how's the sister about dealing with those? I mean, she's younger, mm -hmm. so yeah, she's she's really good. Mm -hmm. um, they have a love hate relationship sometimes. <laughs> like she can be quite, <laughs> she's quite bossy, the little one. Yeah. Um, but they are, they do get on really well when they mm -hmm. do get on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she gets. Yeah, they do get on. So basically, they have different like birthday parties. So the birthday party of the adult is yeah. different from the, the youngest, yeah. obviously. And uh, are they okay with that? I mean, yeah, so like last year, I'm just trying to think what my old, older, youngest do. She went to Jungle Rama. So we took, mm. took the kids over there. Um, and then Ava didn't want to jump. So she just, she was okay with the noise. She's like, I can tolerate it for an hour or whatever. And then mm. they came back to our house and they were noisy. But she was in charge of doing a scavenger hunt. She liked, she liked being able to do that. But then mm. she was like, oh, that's so loud. So then she went to her room, but it was fine. Mm. Yeah, she mm. can cope when it's only a short amount. And so if you I kind of pre-plan it. All oh, right, right. And in terms of the, when we are going to talk about the daily living, um, activities how are we introducing that uh, so daily living so um life skills so life skills so what's an example so say we were um so i needed some milk at the dairy i mm, guess mm. you know maybe not that often i have cash but if i do have cash you know i'd give her the cash and I'll, or she wants an ice block i'll say mm. well here's the ten dollars you buy you both an ice block and mm. work out how much you've got or mm. if you've got any or if, we, if there's something she wants at the warehouse you mm. know two for ten or Mm. three for 15 you know what trying to make them work it out but they actually do a really good uh, program at school year five and six and they have to buy a house it's through the AESB bank and it teaches them like mortgages and savings etc like that mm. um, and she's learned quite a bit and then the kids can make craft and sell it like not for money but yeah. fake money so they kind of have a concept like that um, and living skills we try and try and keep them her room is completely chaos Mm. messy tidy but that's an artist's room like clay all over her table um, but she knows where things are and if you go and ask her to clean it up she wouldn't have a clue like she would start and then get distracted right. so she needs a little bit of prepping but if I work alongside her it's all good, all good. Um, yeah and it's just like making sure it's fun whatever the activity is and just enjoying them you mm. know is she okay with approaching strangers uh, like in the dairy or at the bank um, or I'm thinking the community shops are probably okay because she kind of, you know, we've been in there so often. Um, I, she, I mean, we don't go to them. I go to the mall, but she doesn't like a mall situation unless mm. she's in there for a donut. But she won't go to the supermarket. She hates the supermarket quite often. Just mm. do that on my own, which is fine. We're online. Um, yeah, it's too overwhelming. Too much mm. going on. Mm. Sensory overload. Same with the mall, as long as we're in and out. Mm. If it's one thing we need. But even clothing. Um, I come home with about four different pairs of pants. <laughs> And we find one funny and then I'll go back and find four, like she's into cargo pants, so then I'll go back and buy four pairs of different sizes. But shoes, she'll tell me what she wants and it's like guessing it. She hates all of that type of stuff. Oh. Yeah. So she's not shopping for for, no. for herself? Yeah. No. Yeah. She would go, yeah. like she loves the Dungeons and Dragons shop and um, uh, yeah. yes, uh, okay. yeah. yeah, fabulous. And they do a group for under 15s. They, they are totally inclusive. They're amazing, mm. like lots of role play. So I can leave her there and yeah, she shops up a storm in there, no trouble. Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, right. loves it. But it's, you know, they're all very, they make them feel welcome, you know. She's right. safe and she feels comfortable in there. Mm. Yeah. You mentioned about Dungeons and Dragons. So is that one of her interests? Loves it. Yeah, yeah. I got her into that. I don't know how long that shop's been open. I think just recently, I just yeah, saw maybe that. Oh, yeah, maybe a new shop. A bit. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've expanded. They've taken over two now. Probably a year and a bit ago. Mm, um, mm. And they used to do them at the library, actually, and then COVID hit, and then they yeah. didn't. Yeah, I think it was at Petoni and um, the War Memorial, and yeah. then went around, they're like, oh, I don't know. So then that shop opened, I thought, oh, we'll try it out. Mm. So the first session I went along, I stayed for about half, and then I left, and then the um, one of the dungeon masters actually has an autistic brother. Oh, so she, okay. they were they were just made you feel so comfortable. They're like, just go and do your shopping, whatever, the mm. kids will be fine. Mm. Mm. Um, and now I just, yeah, she's like, when's the next session? Leave me there, really comfortable. And then I also got her into, so from there it goes, this, you can do the 
Dungeons and Dragons and then now she paints the little, you know, the little miniatures. Yeah. So she'll either, she's done a couple of sessions here, but otherwise she'll take them home and paint. So mm. that's another, yeah, another yeah. skill. Yeah. yeah. So how did you find out that she loves Dungeons and Dragons? Or is it something that like just came she up? She kind of got into Dragons as another interest. Mm. And then kind of us thinking, what's around for kind of social skills? And then something outside of Mangareki, mm. somewhere she can meet different people in a different surrounding. Especially when college is a couple of years, it's kind of like planning ahead. Where, where's somewhere safe she can go, mm. you know, that she enjoys? Um, yeah, and then she's met, actually, she's made a couple of other autistic friends and they'll mm. meet there. So it's actually been really good. Oh, she yeah. she has friends, autistic friends? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. How, how so old is one she we met, so her, one of her really good friends, um, she doesn't go to our school, but we met through, what was a class we done at the hospital? It was run by um, Clara. It was a sensory class, I think. Oh. So Clara, I, I know Clara. She's so good, isn't she? She's, she's, so, amazing. she's so amazing. I mean, like, if I can only pick her brains, like, put it in I quite my often, <laughs> well, I, I do a community meeting with her. We've got one going now, which wow. has been really good, just so that all the support's out there for families. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, yeah, it was run by Clara, and then we didn't touch base for two years. We kind of, she, the mum gave me her number because the kids got on there, and we were meant to organise a play date, and then I lost her number and she lost hers. Mm. But long story short, the teacher at her school, it's her niece, and I didn't know that until like last year, and then we reconnected. And okay. they, yeah, so they might only see each other maybe once or twice a term, mm. and they'll either go to each other's house or they'll meet outdoors or do something like that. But that's huge. I mean, yeah, if amazing. you if you can connect with someone, it yeah. could be your tribe, and yeah. from there you can yeah. flourish. And then she's got another one up the hill that goes to another school that used to go to her school. Don't see as much, and then um, most of her friends are yeah, mm. um, just at school. So you mentioned about the clay. Yeah. So she sure. loves. So that was like, I, God, she's been doing clay for quite a few years. Mm. Is, she, is she molding some something? Yeah, she does. Uh, so, so what happens like this year? She's been drawing. So mm. she'll draw a picture. I'll show you some photos. She'll draw it, and then she will sculpt it, and then she went to Armageddon Reese or last year, and then this year, and then she made the costume. But it's good. It's good therapy. So that was one when she was in a year five, six. Her teacher. Um, that was one of the things they would use in class when she was starting to, if something was kind of spiraling out of control, they would just yeah. pull the clay out and it would calm her right down. Oh. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So how did she find out she likes clay as well? Like I think, from drawing to... So carving? before that I bought, oh God, I went through everything. <laughs> <laughs> like trying it out. Yeah, so I went and got, I think we started with soft clay, so it's, yeah. the, it's the air dried clay. Right. And then... Oh, it was probably Play-Doh before that. Play-Doh mm. and then air-dried clay. Then we done. And then she was doing mindfulness classes at school. And I think that's, oh, mm. sorry, in the weekends. And then, um, yeah, and then we got into the hard clay where it baked. And she mm. got into dragons and then she started making, um, this. so it starts kind of, so, that she, so that she makes the wings. This is just like a little bit of the process. And then it's all painted up. Wow, um, that's She's nice. pretty good. Oh, then it's getting painted. And then it's, I don't know if she's got any. So she makes, yeah, the whole. Wow, that's that's so nice. Yeah, it's cool, eh? Mm. And she makes the whole body, but I don't think I've got. Yeah. She, she follows through the whole process, and it's really good for her. She's got really amazing mm. iron hand, but it's yeah. it's a really relaxing. Yeah. And then she made it for the, her Armageddon. So she drew it, made it, and then she's got the costume, which. Wow. Can show you the costume because it's on here. Um, yeah, she loves it. She's mm -hmm. really, really creative, and that's that's like she'll end up working at she, she her dream job is to mm. work at Weta workshops. Ah, uh, yeah, Weta in, yeah. in in the city. Yeah. Did she tell you how she comes up with the uh, idea? Like, this is what I'm going to do now, or the concept. She's only just started a concept this year. Like, she's got a drawing book now, and she's mm. she's she. I, I haven't taken any photos of them, but they they're called baby beams. And so this year, it's the hard head. And then the, then she makes a body and it's like wire and then it's wrapped. She wraps it with fabric and then mm. it's fluff over the top. So it's like these, anim, I don't know what you call they're kind of these creations that yeah. she makes. And they're all different colours and they have like little ears and yeah. they're amazing. How long does it take for her to finish one? Um, or does she do it like overnight? Sometimes she does it in stages depending on like if she has to sculpt them and then the baking's only 10 minutes but sometimes just the fine details and the sculpting can yeah. take a wee while and then yeah. she'll paint them. Um, I don't know, she could probably bang one out in a day or two. Yeah. But yeah, over the weekend she'll just like tap away at it. 
Right, right. Mm. And in terms of uh, services from the government or other non not for profit um, organizations, is she getting one like um, guidance on how to navigate? Just ask Autism New Zealand. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 resources. Yeah. No, um, I guess I guess as our journey's gone by, you mm. like. I guess just around, you get to know, I think, I don't know about you, mm. but once you start doing a few courses in education, you mm. kind of find your groove or your families, you mm. find that you kind of do the same. So I've probably got three really good friends that are mm. in the same same journey. So yeah, we just yeah. share or when the kids were younger, you know, we'd take care of, like have tunes with each other's kids in there, yeah, so which has been really good. And then like Shona was really good, Donna's yeah, sister, yeah. you know, she'd say, oh, we get this. And I was like, oh, we don't get that. Or we get this and we don't. So yeah. that's only that's probably the way we've had to navigate. It's like, how come you get that and we don't? But it's yeah. it's about what you know. And swimming as well. I just learned that there's a funding for swimming. Oh, is there a funding for swimming? Yeah, we're doing this. I send you the form in it. Okay. Has your son had a needs assessment? He, what's the difference of that with Life Unlimited? That yes, it? that's what I mean. Ah. So we, we only, I only learned this since this job. So last year, so we've been getting it since she was five and a half. Mm. didn't know how to spend the money because we were like we don't have any family around here I always just thought it was carer because they just yeah. give you that like carer support days and yeah. I didn't know what we could spend it on and we yeah. go to riding RDA RDA yeah he's on a waiting list my son is on a waiting oh, list oh I'm getting it in so we've done it for like years now um, and it wasn't until last year the mm. lady up said oh you know you can use like your carer support hours I was like no and then when I called them up they're like yeah you have x amount of dollars a year and if you don't use it you lose it mm. and i said oh what do you what can you buy and they're like mm. anything that will give you a break so we've bought like paint you know like mm. art brushes mm. like lots of art supplies because up until then we were funding it because mm. we didn't know and then her riding and then i've heard you swimming and you can get yeah. like some different therapies um yeah. like mindfulness etc oh, can we use that for a uh private therapy yeah you the funding yeah, there's some. There's a. I think there's a certificate you can you can do. But um, right. I started the, both of them actually. Well, Ava's mm. just finished, but Heather up in um, Mungarish is out of. I'll give you some leaflets. Yeah. So she does on a Saturday morning class, and it's it's been amazing. It's just like tools and strategies on mm. how to deal with different situations. A lot of it's with art. Right. Yeah, art, and you might take your favourite teddy or something, and mm. you might go, "This is my teddy," you know. So it's a bit of public speaking type of thing. Yeah. yeah, it's been really good for the kids. Can you uh, refund uh, from five years old? Uh, from no, no. <laughs> no just I that and I was thinking that's probably like twelve thousand dollars. But so I make sure everyone knows because they don't tell you, and we didn't know what a needs assessment was, and it was. I think it was Shona yeah. that said, "Have you had?" And I was like, "What?" Yeah, yeah. Someone same just... with disability allowance. Like, uh, yeah, the the MSD one. Yep. So it's fifty three dollars. Yeah, something, something like, like that. Something like that a week. So yeah, yeah, I just make sure you're entitled to all of that. Right. All of them, I we never knew that they existed. Someone just told us, like, there's this Life Unlimited, why don't you just check on that? It might be something that um, you might get a support or something. And like. it's a shame, I just think now, like, this is this is in my dream world, like, once mm. you get assessed through the DHB or wherever, if you go privately, it's a shame there's not, like, a package going, there you go, and it has, like, your needs assessment, mm. it has parent-to-parent -parent, like, support groups, yeah. it has everything that you need in there and how to do it without going through the without having to make a phone call and you're mm. on the phone for like 80 minutes yeah. and then you need to make an appointment yeah uh, the appointment one that's yeah. gonna take some take a while and especially if you're going through like um hell yeah. <laughs> i would say yeah. i would say challenges yeah so those challenges and now you're overwhelmed what should i do and you don't know no you know. like explore um yeah, explore was the same. That happened, I was, I was going to say back to that question you said before about Ava's eating, mm. did she ever stop eating? And mm. and she didn't eat for like quite a few days. And I was like, I rang, the D, I rang my GP and I was like, mm. she's not eating. Who do, and at this stage, we'd been um, mm. discharged from child development. Child, uh, CDS. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, oh no, no, sorry, we might have still been with them. Mm. And then I rang them and then they, and I honestly went back and forth. They were in GP and GP being rang them and I was like, oh, I, don't, I actually don't know what to do and then explores busy you know yeah. like so I rang this I somehow it came from my phone there's a lady up in Auckland Gina Wilson I think her name, name is and she does all holistic stuff mm. but deals with autistic kids and I said 
I know you're an orphan, I just don't know what to do. Right. And so she sent me and she said, get some bark flower remedies for her. That'll do in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So I got them through some pharmacy in a pony. I just said, look, she's recently been diagnosed. She's anxious. I just went through all the things. Hmm. I don't know if it's a placebo effect, but anyway, the next day she started eating. Oh. I don't know. Can't tell you, but it worked and that's it was good. It worked. Yeah, <laughs> because you do like that's the thing because there's such a weightless now. Mm, mm. Even some of the private stuff, you yeah. can't just get straight in. It's yeah, it's hard. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned about anxious. When she's anxious, then it turns. Uh, so when she's anxious, like if something's gone wrong at school, mm. um, like what's a classic example? Probably sports. Her biggest thing. If, if mm. a teacher, a new teacher's come in and they don't know she doesn't understand instructions of a game, mm. that's usually a big one. And if there's no visual instructions and you're verbally doing it, she wouldn't have a clue. Um, so, quite, or, or if she's quite hard on her schoolwork, she will, she scratches herself. Mm. Yeah, or bites, she, not so much biting this year, but she does have bite marks up her arm. And that's just because it dulls that pain, I think. So I feel like she's visual, given the images that you've just showed me and uh, more of like, uh, social, what, what was that? So, social stories. It's social kinda, stories are really yeah, good. Yeah, 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 it's kind of like that. Yeah. Where so if we're going on like a school camp or like she has a change of teacher each each year, like the school's really good, they'll give you it. It only has to be like four pages. It might be mm. um, Ava is going into, say, room 12 next year, next page. This is your teacher, Mato is Sam, picture of him, mm. picture of the classroom door, mm. everything will be the same. You just need to keep it really short and simple yeah. and then and then they can read over it in their own time. Yeah, Really, like, really helpful. Right. So I feel like the instructions, when she's given instructions, they can just use that social stories and yeah. then this is what yeah. you do next. And yeah. after that, this, this, this. Especially like if you give them, it's even at home, I can't give her too many instructions even go and get your classic mm. one in the morning in our houses, go and get some socks and clean mm. your teeth. And quite often she will remember one of them and then she'll go, what are, What was I meant to do? Yeah. So you have to break them down into little steps. Mm. Um, mm. Too, too much. Right. Yeah. So just small, yeah, small amounts at one time. Oh. This okay. is a really good, um, an app, one of our educators put me onto it. Um, a couple of months back. Um, mm. It might be a little bit too young for your son. She, Ava doesn't actually have a phone, she does it off this. Mm. Here it is, it's called Heavy Tika. But because it's visual, um, yeah, so she makes her own things, so it's probably not much exciting. See, this mm. is what she's done. So, Melatonin brush. Yeah, yeah. so they, they can set what they need to do. Mm. So if they read, you know, I don't know what your son's hat was reading, but mm. if they can read and then you do start my day and then once they've done it all, they get like a little prize at the end yeah. and you feed like a, I think the reward is you mm. feed your pet or whatever it is. So it's it's really good because it's visual, but also mm. as they get older, it's not coming from a parent's like, hurry up, can yeah. you do, can you do, as you're trying to all get out the door. Yeah, what's the name, sorry? Habitica, H-A-B-I-T-I-C-A. Habitica, Habitica, yeah. yeah. That's a really good one to do. All right. As they and get older. Yes, he's non-verbal, but he's starting to learn some words now um, at six, which is kind of okay. I, I'm, at least he's starting to say some some words. We have, is he under speech language? He he is. He oh, is. good. So because we've got, just take we've got one here permanent, and we're bound to. Uh, I don't know when another one's going to start, but mm. we do have them out of here. Yeah, that's the challenge because when we had like we, we we've been fighting for that or funding for him. It's really hard to get a. Eh? Yeah, it is, and he's he's a runner. He don't have a se sense of so danger. So where does he run? Um, along the streets. <laughs> Do you have? Does he? Would he wear a watch? Uh, no. Would no. he wear a pendant? No, does he, he wear shoes, or he hates the feeling of shoes? He wears uh, shoes, but he doesn't like um, helmet, or he doesn't like something that. But is you can get those if you've got a. Um, iPhone, you can get discs, just cheap ones. Mm. I think you get them at like Harvey Norman. I mean, even Rebel Is Store. That a, are you not talking about the GPS? Kind of. And I've, mm. I know a mum at the school has it. So you can put them, this is the thing. So you could even hide them under a shoe, you know, under the bit where you left out. Oh, and so right. if you connect it to your phone, um, yeah, he will feel mm. it that one. I'll try and find the name of them. So there's that one, and mm. then there's pendants as well. Mm. And then, like you say, you can get um, space talk watches. So he would wear it in the funded to like, I think you get like quite a discount. So yeah. he he can call you. You he has it obviously connected to there and then mm -hmm. if he runs from the school you know you can see where he is. Yeah. 
no. but they have might Ava doesn't like wearing a watch we've tried watch she doesn't run mm. but she doesn't like the feeling of the tightness around around mm. here so it depends if they like that there's lots of different ones you can get you can get um bangles you can get the pendants but sometimes you know they try and pull them yeah and then there's the search and rescue they're called wander search but if you call that and he'd run away it's quite i think traumatizing because it's the police would come oh yeah and he was that's quite (laughs) yeah and it's like and why is he running is it because it's a sensory thing do you know what i mean is it because he's trying to regulate himself Mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah and uh, do you have fence like where you live it's an apartment so basically we have double locked it so oh, he, he now he learned how to open the door oh. so we have double locked it even the, at the top uh, at the top so he won't be able to reach that can you get outside like is there an outside but because you can get there is fencing through the dhb mm. i don't uh, know if that would work in your apartment style, uh, it's an apartment block so it's a shared um, garden yeah. so I, I said we just need to double lock just to make sure that he's yeah. not going to run or sometimes yeah sometimes he wants to especially during summer because it's um, so he likes running. so when he runs does he tend to go to the same place or is it different each time different each time oh god <laughs> he have an experience because whenever he goes out and we figure out that he's out we eventually ask the brother to look after so he's there's always someone with mm-hmm. him that's so quick though i mean you only need to like open the cupboard and they're gone eh? yeah they're, like, gone. they're so fast yeah, yeah. yeah especially crossing the the road the road and they just have no road sense like no, they just no no they've checked out and yeah. they know where they're going yeah i remember when we um, he went uh, when he was at, uh, at the church and i think he got overwhelmed that time he ran away towards the road and yeah, how does he deal with the church as in the noise or is he used to it or do you, has he got headphones no he, he doesn't like it like oops okay i i wear it now now here here's your headphone back so he what we've done is we started uh, bringing him to crowded places bit by bit yeah so just he, little baby steps and building it up yeah and uh, just to make sure that like like for example mall we don't usually go there frequently but now maybe we can go there and just to go visit. on a quiet time see might choose nine o'clock in the morning yeah and until such time that he's okay with it and he's still in in the pram so what he does uh, every time yeah then they're, the, they're just like the wee trick is that you ah, that's the one that you put yeah, under, yeah. okay so no leaming in there um if, if you've got iphones that might be the way to do it um, and especially if you can hide it in a shawl for he's wearing um yeah. laces some kids rip the shoes off and they don't like the laces though so that's what yeah ah, yeah right right but it might be an option okay so we'll, we'll try that and just to make sure he's safe mm. uh, because it's it's scary isn't it's it scary and yeah. uh, i remember when we were an, uh, another setting which um it's kind of like a church like setting where they made uh, some i mean there was an event like a market kind of thing we went there and then he got overwhelmed so it made the, the food probably the smells of the food the and people that yeah the noise and he just uh, jump out of uh, I, I was carrying him he jumped jumped out of me and then started running around and does church have is there a safe space you can go at church like is there a, is there a room when if, that you could show him when he's getting overwhelmed that you could set up like a beanbag or a, a little tent that he could go to no I, I, here no I don't remember having that one I know in Auckland when we used mm-hmm. to live there there's a church where in there's a quiet room there mm-hmm. but they don't have yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's why we okay we'll just stay at home <laughs> yeah that's hard eh? but then you miss out don't you yeah. but you do you, as a family you learn eh? like we don't go we don't go out for dinners like our we mm. do takeaways or we do there's one cafe in eastbourne the pavilion yeah mm. they're really good there where we could get an ice cream walk around to the ducks uh, and we could get a coffee type of thing yeah but no no don't do the takeaways mm. of that yeah you, know? you mentioned about ice cream so he loves ice cream so yeah. what we usually do when we started with visiting the malls and stuff we yeah. bought him some ice creams and then okay now you have ice cream so can we just walk like maybe just visit uh, the mall maybe one hour or 30 minutes at max mm. or one hour maybe um so at least he can regulate like okay now there's this thing called mall (laughs) or and then it's like when you get home you can have your ipad there's actually a really good it's on my laptop actually and it's Mm. a um it's a clip we've got it's about a minute and it's about this little boy that goes into the mall with his parents Mm. and and there's a lot that goes on because you think every shop in that mall their music is all different sounds different sounds yeah you know there is 
different languages, different cultures, different people lighting. bumping into you, <laughs> the lighting, that's horrendous. Yeah. So you yeah. think of all those noises and then that kid, and you can, you, I, I've seen it in malls, you know, you see that kid on the floor that's just exploded, like cannot take it yeah. anymore. Yeah. They're just so overwhelmed. Yeah. But if you can do it, like say, at the start or the end of the day, mm. and if it's like say baby steps half an hour, then mm. build it up. Mm. Yeah. and make it a good experience and leave while it's good. That's yeah. awesome. That, yeah, that's, he's now um, being able to handle uh, a lot of noise, but if it's getting over too crowded, yeah. that's where, where you will find that, okay, we need to go home now. <laughs> mm. Does he do any other activities? Uh, he just loves uh, painting with... Painting's good. Uh, on his uh, iPad. Yep. So oh, painting, good. letterings and stuff. Yep. So, he lo so it's repetition, eh? Mm, repetitions mm. and... He's Are your older siblings good with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're playing with him, but sometimes uh, because uh, the neurotypical kids uh, wanted to interactions, like yeah. social interactions, yeah. and, and it's hard if you, if they have their friends around and mm. then your brother's been pain, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Not a pain, but yeah. Yeah. The good thing is uh, they're accepting. So sometimes they like my my daughter. Uh, sometimes he pulls her hair. Like unknowingly, maybe in terms of the the the, the pressure or uh, what you call that, when he pulls the hair, obviously it's going to hurt. Mm. So good thing they're not like um, pushing him or they're being patient in their own way. Yeah. But still, I couldn't imagine how mm. difficult it would be. Mm. Someone would be pulling your hair mm. with that great force, mm. right? And because I was gonna say with that care of support money too, like I don't know, like say in your little apartment, like. If he likes jumping, like you can get the trampolines, and you can get like sensory seats and stuff mm. like that. Uh, we, we we got the trampoline, like uh, we bought a small one. Yeah, so that's all you need, just enough, like so for for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's actually a really cool chair downstairs. It's a, I think it's an IKEA one, and so it's this little. Mm. I'll have to show you, and you put the whole shade over it and they spin around a lot of kids like that one mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, we use we actually use that that funding as well it's a good help um, yeah. you can get like ipads for them too like we've done that for ava last year and mm -hmm. i bought her so then i followed on from her um to try and get her off the ipad a bit more too mm -hmm. she she'd take my phone and she's really good at taking photos so then we bought a camera mm -hmm. um so that encourages getting outside in nature and taking the photos right. and then she'll edit them so it kind of leads on which has been good wow so she's on uh, photo photography yeah. now wow yeah. wow wow yeah. so did you like manage to get her some someone to teach her how to do stuff or it's i just need her own? like she's learned a lot through youtube ah okay yep. she's found a couple of youtubers that she likes these art artists and then she went to armageddon for the first time last mm. year um my husband took her mm. and they done three rounds. He said the first toe she was completely overwhelmed and he didn't think she'd do it and then she loved it and then I just took her a few weekends ago. Oh. Um, loved it. Very, I don't know if you've ever been, mm. but um, it's amazing for these yeah. these kids. They Probably. can just be themselves, you know, they're all in costume, they're all very sci-fi, <laughs> they're in their own little world, you know, and she had no trouble shopping there that day either, like she bought plushies, you know, and she was, you know, there were swords, there was you name it, she was, yep. She, she was there for like, always hates walking, but we walked for three hours, no complaints. Wow. So when it's driven by her goal. Mm. Yeah. I, th it's, that's if I said, let's go for a walk down the beach, she'd be like, we always go to the beach. Why do we always have to go to the beach? Yeah, yeah. You know, but you know, then you buy into it. Okay, we'll go to the beach and you get an mm. ice cream. Okay, well, you know. Yeah, I remember my wife say, saying that like, because he has a goal, that's why he's like doing that. Um, there's this um, Lego truck, Duplo Lego, and he he's trying to 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 this this what you call this um, disassemble the Lego, but he couldn't do it. So what he did is he just smashed it. Yeah. So if you are like if you don't know what's happening, you probably would say like, oh, you're uh, destroying the the, the Lego. Mm -hmm. But no, that his goal is to dismantle the the Lego, yeah. not yeah. destroy it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's funny how they work, eh? Yeah. What's well, your son into? What's his interest? Uh, Lego sometimes. Yeah, he's, Legos. yeah, and iPad. He's into painting and, um, oh no, the, the pictures are in, in my phone, but he's into paintings and he's into um, drawings. And we used to do to Papa. That was Ava's thing. I think they used to go, I used to work a Saturday, so my husband would take it every mm. weekend. Mm. She, she knows it, she loves it. Mm. So always been really creative like yeah. that i think because you can you know it's different lighting plus the the arts yeah, yeah. Art. right we went there and he 
after an hour or two, he started crying. So we know that he's already overwhelmed. The douse is, I don't know if you've taken them to the douse, upstairs yeah. in the douse. It's, uh, like, it's quiet. Yeah, that's quiet. It's, it's almost a room probably a little bit bigger than this. And mm. it's just a kid's room where there's like drawing and stuff. It's quite nice if yeah. you just want to chill out for a bit. Yeah, yeah that's quiet. We've, we've been there and it's quiet and not so many people at, mm. at that time. So mm. I think it's the timing as well. And in the zoo, we used to do the zoo, we got passes there. That was another thing that they used mm. to enjoy. Mm. Mm. It was just like the zoo and stuff. But the outdoors are really good. Loves right. the outdoors, like a okay. Percy's Reserve and stuff like that. Uh, we, we, we went there as well. Yes, yeah, cool, eh? it was So like, nice. It was uh, Shona or Don, I think, who mentioned, like, there's Percy's Reserve. You yeah, can the ducks, there. it's safe. Mm. The kids mm. just fluff around, take some it's duck quiet. food. Yeah, yeah, it's quiet. It's just the only uh, concern I had is there's an exit there towards the highway. Yes, and it goes, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it's quite a long way back to, put, well, yeah, yeah. quick way back to put Tony for him. But yeah, yeah, for him, but it's like 100k <laughs> yeah. per hour. K traffic, cars. eh? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, but that's all right. I, I mean, yeah. as long as we're, like, focusing on him, making sure that he's not yeah. gonna run away. and But he still, um, he still wants to ride on his uh, pram. Yeah, like well, he still likes it. Mm. That's probably the enclosed tightness yeah. as well, eh? And he's still in nappies, so yeah. That's so you get funding for the nappies, eh? Yes. Yeah, good. I always so check that too because a lot of families don't need. Yeah, know that. someone just told us about that. So yeah. it, it anything didn't you're entitled to, I say go for it. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just like otherwise it ends up costing a fortune. You know, you pay it yeah. up and you tax it. Yeah, and that it's a lot. Like, mm. how much does it cost for one pack of like nappies? nappies yeah. right? Any advice to parents, especially those who are just uh, learning about undergoing the autism journey? So there's, there's, there's a, an app called AES Detect. Yeah. Yeah, AES and it's Detect. up to 36 months. 36, okay. So it's good for like plunking. It won't obviously tell you your child's got autism, but mm -hmm. it's a good way to, to track so you have the information there mm -hmm. to give to the professional a bit later on. So yeah. there's that. Um, so if you've just come in and I've just had an assessment, mm -hmm. Uh, what would I recommend? It takes a wee while to get your head around, but you know, mm. good support network. Like there's parent to parent. We do at Autism New Zealand. There's Fans course, so that's our two day um, insight to autism and yeah. some great strategies. So diagnosed, undiagnosed, professional, anyone can go to that. Yeah. Um, so we have that. We have tilting the seesaw. So yeah. that's our. Um, I don't know if your son. You've done that with your son's teacher. So mm. that's parent teacher either Senko or teacher support whoever it is um, and you work as a team obviously and find the strengths and weaknesses where your child is but it's adapted for everyone in the classroom not just the but autistic kids it, yeah. yeah that's it MOE funded um, and then we do a way to play so that's a so tilting the seesaw is two days sorry and way to play is one day mm. and that's for kind of I think it's zero to eight mm. And it's basically how you can engage joyously and play with your kids right. um, instead of seeing that kid that runs up and down the kindy fence mm. and the teachers are all inside because they don't know how to handle it. Mm. But if you've done that for eight hours, it would be a bit boring. So how could you interact with them and get just, even if it's a snippet for five minutes every now and then to engage in yeah. their learning? Um, and then we do tailored programs as well. Right. So if there was like a workplace, for example, um, that was struggling or there was a lot of neurodiverse people in there, um, there's a trained team member that could go into that. Mm. Um, supportive, so we can, as an outreach, we can go into like support school meetings mm. um, for the family. Um, and I guess we're just here if there's any questions as well, like for far now, and just connecting them to the right services right. Right. Um, and, and is what my role is. Mm. And services and support and some other stuff like yeah. network with the really network yeah and we d and also even if they have been diagnosed for a few years and they want to know like there's an employment service we do as well or mm -hmm. just any questions you know mm -hmm. transitioning into different schools yeah you mentioned about parent to parent are you there, i remember my wife saying there's like a monthly meet up with they do it uh, oh. and i think it's every i could be wrong i'm sure it's every second week in lower hut i know it's in um it's a church up in avalon mm -hmm. Um, and she covers it's not just autism it's, every, it's everything yeah all just yeah. different type disabilities but it's good if you if you don't know i guess if you don't know much about whatever your child's going through mm. and you just need that support right. like around parents that are on a similar journey it's mm. really good so there's parent to parent and then we have autism connect through autism new zealand so that's our online platform so mm. if you're busy it's every second wednesday second one wednesday. one to mm. one thirty so it's a parent uh, yeah, parent support group, and then there's an autistic one as well. And that, in the parent support group, there might only be three or four, and there's always right. an outreach. So any question, we're just connecting with people, and it's safe, you know. Yeah. And everyone is welcome. Yeah, 
Mm. All you got to do is register online yeah. All right. and come in, which uh, is quite good. And then there's a few sh social groups going. Um, there's a couple run out of here, Minecraft and an adult social group. Okay. So they run out of here, but not actually run by Autism New Zealand. Oh, mm. All right. What is autism for Dana? What is autism for Dana? So it's unique. Um, empathy, there's lots of love, kind, creative. Um, where is my question here? Um, caring, fun. It's so like even if you say you had a meeting with your child when your child is present, mm -hmm. just um, just got to remember because they're autistic, they can still hear what you're saying. So quite often you'll get, say, a teacher and a parent and the child they're mm -hmm. talking over, and it's actually they do understand what's going on. Um, and once you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. Oh, yeah. Like everyone's so different from the next one that you meet. Mm -hmm. um, what were you going to say? I think we've. Autism New Zealand's employment program. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, that one. Yeah, and then there's Yubi College, which is based in Wellington mm. train station, so mm. they can go there from 16. Mm. So they do mixed media, there's lots of like um, IT security, there's lots of different options. Mm. Um, they can learn in yeah, very small classrooms, like maybe 10 per class. Okay, um, Yep, yeah. and a lot of um, families that we get, we're finding like the children, I find between. 15 and 17, they're getting to that bit where the pressure's on, mm. pressure's on for exams and mm. you've got to be really careful of the burnout. Yeah. So um, some of them are, take the children and they'll either do like a couple of days dual enrolment, so some at Takura, so they'll mm. pick their favourite subject so it can be done at home and then mm. say two days at a college because right. they just get so overwhelmed by it all. So it's just learning to make sure that they recharge a little bit. Yeah. So when you say you recharge, um, do you have any in particular that they can start doing, like meditation? Yeah, like meditation, whatever they're into, if it, if they, if you have a, um, I'm just thinking for Ava, she loves, like nature's really good for her. Right. Um, and we would cut back like play dates, um, just giving her time to herself, mm. so just to, to reach, like making sure she's having enough sleep, obviously eating a bit better. Um, so it depends what your kids into if they're a runner, you know. Obviously, they, they might like to run the hills. It's just their way. Like I myself, if I've had a stressful day, I like to walk the hills. I love walking, or listening to music. Yeah. So it's whatever, whatever I guess your child's into. If yeah. it's like art, painting, drawing, whatever, yeah. swimming. Or we can probably drop him off the well tech. You know, well tech. Yeah. There's a big uh, yeah. field there. Like, yeah. okay, go run. run. <laughs> yeah, run up and down. And sometimes it's all they know just to like de stress. De stress, you know? yeah, yeah. And then just making sure I think being a parent, open, and you know, I don't know. I've always been quite open with Ava. So hopefully, hopefully, mm. as she you know gets into adulthood, that she can come if there's something wrong, and you know we need to have a conversation. She doesn't feel ashamed or embarrassed or whatever. As long as she's open to you yeah as, uh, that's right and we've got a couple of mums up this up the the hill that she's quite close to so it's quite nice that mm. you know if i'm not here mm. she can load off to those as well right. she feels safe any final message that you want to say to parents and especially when, when it comes to the strategies and some stuff that um i guess just educate and don't be afraid to reach out like mm. no question is a silly question mm. and i think connect with us and we'll always like autism new zealand mm. Um, if we don't know the answer, we'll find the right one. But I just think, for me, it was like, the more I learned, it made our house run smoother because then I could understand. So you never change the autistic person. It's the whānau and family around that need to educate themselves. Mm. So we're the ones that need to change for that person. Yeah. Did yeah. you feel like, I don't know what words should I say, when you found out that your child has autism, what did you feel? Oh, I was like, Max, I was like relieved. But then I was like, I remember waking up the next day and I was like, she's changed, but she actually hadn't changed. There were so many, and then I was I was really happy because I knew I could get support, but then I was really angry because I was like, this has been going on, you know, when I look back and know none of the professionals had kind of picked it up. Um, and then I was like, oh, and then I did worry. I was like, is she gonna be living with us, you know, all her life? And like, how can we make it independent? How can we make her have a fulfilled life, you know? Um, so there was all of those kind of barriers, but then you talk to people around, and I mean, you see some of those famous people, yeah. you know, like Chanel here, like amazing, two books, author, wow. 
an amazing, you know, she's a... Um, Two books. No, I thought only one. She's no. just written. It's not IP yet. Um, hey, that's another one. She's oh. just done I am ADHD. It's due to come out in June, I think, July. Mm. Um, you know, and she's our advisor, which is great, wow. you know? So it's great having someone like that on board mm. in this situation. Yeah. So, yeah. How did the dad felt back then? Stuck on such a long time. No, it I did, think it we, I think we were all like the same. We were mm. like, and you know, I remember friends saying, and I hate this comment. She doesn't look autistic. Yeah, ah, that yeah, really right. drives me <laughs> like I want to punch them in the face. And I was like, so what does she look like? Um, yeah. I don't know what Give the look is. Model, I know? don't know what the answer is to that either because I don't know what an autistic person yeah, was meant to look yeah, like. But it's just what's like, the model? Is there a model? Oh we should God. be looking at. Like. Well, she looks like she's coping beautifully, and it's just like. I remember when she was young and she'd have the meltdowns and I guess parents even they didn't maybe didn't understand they wouldn't you know they didn't mm. know what to do and they'd be like patting her on the back I was mm. like no just leave her just give her space and she will be fine yeah. but the more you obviously you, you interact with her the worse yeah. it escalates do you think we just need more awareness across the board regardless of who you are yeah, yeah and I guess if you didn't know anything about autism if you didn't have it in, in any of your family members never like worked with anyone that was yeah. autistic or a neurodivergent yeah. You wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, you wouldn't have, and yeah. you just assume, yeah, and no, or uh, any disability, you know, yeah. just anything. And there are a lot so of anyway. You're going to change it. Yeah, you know, like you can't go back to like something that happened in the 1980s, like or even the 70s, where they were in like an IHC home and there was nothing. Like you need these people have amazing skills. Yeah, they can. Uh, I mean, they are so clever. If I would put it this way, uh, uh, they are now ta taxpayers. Yeah. I mean, if that's yeah. what they wanted to hear, yeah. like if I will be honest. Yeah. That. That's what I mean. It's just like actually, because it's the hard bit for a lot of them, is the whole job interview. The process is so overwhelming for them mm. and they don't know, but they've got that. They'd be amazing. Do you know what I mean? You look at their skill set, but it's just getting them through there. And they're focused and yeah. they are like. And having an understanding. I mean, if they can work from home or if they can work on a desk with no light or with no sound near the noisy fridge or whatever it is. Like, okay. Do you follow um, uh, Tony Atwood and Sue Larkey? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're uh, good. I always get good, like, yeah. they're, they're, um, they have some pretty cool things, eh? Th yeah, that's where I heard about the gifts and surprises that mm. if there's an, if you're going to a party with an autistic person, mm. uh, make sure that uh, you mention what's inside mm. because they usually yep. they don't yep. like surprises like that. No. Um, I was going to say for your son, like for um, school holidays, if you guys need a bit of a break, there mm. is a school holiday program in Karori and it's through Auto uh, mm. the Intervention Trust, Autism Intervention Trust. I don't know if you've used it, but at Dyer yeah. Street mm. in Lower Heart, mm. um, there's a guy there, Moses, he's called Pride Lambs. He is amazing. Oh. So he doesn't, he's very, wants all these different disabilities to come in and they do amazing things. They're off tablets, real old school games, mm. but yeah. That's, oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I should interview him as well. Yeah. Mm. He's, oh God, he's mm. amazing. Yeah, I've, I've had a, quite a few meetings with him. Mm. I can give you his details. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got some of his stuff downstairs. Uh, yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess that's it for now. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your time. Uh, yeah, that was cool. Every tangata fight takewatanga is different. If you fail with one strategy, don't stop. Keep moving forward. Always remember that for every failure you encounter is one step closer to your success. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time. Memuto te fakawa haire. Let's stop judging others. Memahi tahi tato. Let's all work together. Kia maya, kia kaha, be brave and be strong.